Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I read in March. This past month was a weird reading month for me because one week I was on vacation and then another week I was recovering from a sickness so reading wasn't on the forefront of my mind but I did manage to read five books this month which I'm really happy about. Let's just get right to the first one which was The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rokshani Chokchi and I rated this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This one is an adult gothic fantasy romance book and I do have a full review up of this one so I'm going to be speaking about this book quite briefly. Ultimately I do have mixed feelings about this book. We do have very whimsical and beautiful writing which can be one of my pet peeves in a book because sometimes it distracts from the plot and the characters which did happen in this one for me. We are following a scholar of myths who gets married to a mysterious woman, Indigo, and their marriage is one that is quite strange to me because at first it seems it's really all lovey-dovey but then it kind of takes a turn for the worse. In some moments I did think it got a little bit toxic because of that that's one of the reasons why it did take me out of the story was like the unlikable characters at least give the characters a chance for me to like them or to like to hate them. I felt like Indigo was really very much unlikable that I couldn't like the story, if that makes sense. Anyways, I think I was let down by a fantasy standalone book that I did want to love but ultimately it didn't do it for me. Next, I picked up a contemporary romance book and it is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. I rated this one a 4 out of 5 books and I absolutely love this one. So in this one we're following Casey who is a badass firefighter and she's based in Texas but because she has to go to Boston and take care of her mother, she then needs to transfer firehouses to one in Boston. And at this firehouse, they're a little bit more old school than Casey is used to. Especially with Casey being the only woman in the crew, she only finds a friendly face in the rookie. First off, I love the snappy, quick dialogue that we get with multiple characters and especially with the romance between Casey and the rookie, which is her romance interest. There is a slow burn romance, there's fake dating scenarios, and we also have hiding from co-workers from the mutual attraction that they feel for each other. And it's not all about the romance, we also follow Casey on a journey of healing, forgiveness, and learning to find love again. Basically, the ending is a happily forever after, which I was very happy about with the many ups and downs that we got that ending. And overall, I think I just need more books from Catherine Center because I absolutely love this one. Next up, I read King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This one is a start of the King of Scars duology. The main focus on this book are on the characters of Nikolai, Zoya, and Nina who are healing from the effects of the war. And we also see Nikolai grappling with the darker side of himself and seeing that he needs a little bit of help to heal this growing power within him. I do recommend you if you want to pick up King of Scars to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Crows duology before diving into this one because there's so much backstory that we got in those books that really do pay off in Camp Scars. Lee Bardugo definitely does not disappoint in continuing to build up her fantastical world of Grisha and Ravka and all the characters that we all come to love. The pacing at the beginning of this book was a little bit slow off but it does pay off in the end of the book and we are following our three main characters and they all go through many moments of bravery and keeping up their tenacity. Nikolai, he is dealing with a darker side of himself. Zoya, she discovers a new power within herself. And Nina, she is healing from past hurts. The characters for me were the best parts of this book. And also, there is a romance which is more slow burn and we get really nice development of tension between these two characters and I'm excited to see where that is going to go in Rule of Wolves, the sequel. To add to the growing tension between this pairing, 
was like marriage <laughs> worries so that was really fun overall i'm ready for more angst in the romance department in the sequel so i'm really excited to get to that next i picked up another romance book and it was love on the brain by ali hazelwood this one i rated a four out of five stars we are following b who is the lead on a newer engineering project at nasa so she's a brainiac and very very smart however she has to co-lead with levi ward who is tall dark and handsome but is also her arch nemesis from grad school just to get this out of the way i do have to mention this was b did really annoy me at first she is one of those people that tend to ramble in both her speech and her thoughts but i did get used to her narration as the book went on how this romance starts is when b's project starts going awry the staff are ignoring her equipment has gone missing and levi is the only friendly face around so they build up their relationship from being friendly co-workers to friends to a steamy romance and the chemistry and the banter were top notch i absolutely loved it and unexpectedly they both have common interests in lifestyles which is a huge shock to me and i really didn't like levi as a romantic interest he's very thoughtful and caring this book is also a stem based contemporary romance besides that aspect we did see other themes in this book such as politics in science and large institutions, the lack of a woman in science and in STEM fields, and also how standardized tests are quite outdated. However, overall, the romance was really spicy and we do get a happy ending, which is always something I love. The last book I finished in March was a novella, and this was The Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. She also wrote the Green Mold Saga series that I've been raving about. I also did rate this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Fonda Lee really does show off her writing skills in this one because the only type of book that I've read from her has been a urban fantasy setting. So it was really nice to see how her writing took on a epic fantasy type of world. She definitely did not disappoint in that, but I feel like the format of a novella really did hinder the world building for me. The world itself seemed very fascinating because we're set in a world that has these giant hunting birds known as rocks, so they're monster hunters essentially. And we have our main character, Esther, who is wanting to become a rocker, who is a handler of these giant birds. Although the world building did struggle a bit to develop because of the novella format, I did learn to care for Esther as a character. It was quite easy to form an attachment to her because of her story of her mother and her little brother getting killed by a monster. She goes on this whole journey about wanting to become a rocker so that she could protect others by way of this giant bird that she's learning to care for and handle and train so i really did like her story however for other characters the novella was way too short for me to actually care about them as i did for esther except for zara who is esther's rock her bird i really like zara <laughs> overall i do want more from this world and this novella just really felt like a huge teaser. Those were all the books that I managed to read in March. I'm quite happy about what I managed to read. I'm looking forward to reading more books as per usual. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you all had a great March. And I also hope you can give me a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.